Alpha. What is up everybody? Nate in the wild here. I am in northern Norway. This, this is the Arctic Circle. Does it look like it? Because it feels like it. These fingers lose the feeling. But I have some incredible news. I am standing here with the brand new, just announced, never before seen in the wild, Sony 20mm f1.8. This lens is a dream. This is what I've been waiting for for years. It's uh, It looks kind of like a, a replica of the Sony 24 millimeter F1.4, which as you all know, is just the Astro Kingpin, the undisputed champ. I think it has a new challenger. A little bit wider, not quite as fast of an aperture, but I think that's gonna be all right. I'm gonna put this thing through its paces. We're here for a week. Um, I'm gonna shoot some landscapes. We're gonna get some super dynamic lighting. We're gonna do some Astro. Cross your fingers through some Aurora Borealis. Let's get this thing ran down, test it out. I think it's gonna be killer. Let's see. Right off the bat, let's talk about the size and the shape of this thing, because you know this is the first glance anyone's gotten at this. It was just announced like 20 minutes ago. Um, at first glance, this looks exactly like the 24 millimeter f1.4 G Master. I think honestly, if you saw it in the field mounted to a camera, you probably wouldn't know which was which unless you walked up and actually read the number 20 off the front. Um, a couple noticeable differences. It is. 84.7 millimeters long, which is a bit shorter than the 24 1.4, and it only weighs 373 grams, which for those of you keeping score at home is nearly 20% lighter than the 24 f 1.4. That's a pretty significant difference. 20% lighter. 373 grams makes this by far the lightest 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens uh, for E mount and actually significantly lighter than the Nikon mirrorless equivalent as well. Um, it has the same 67 millimeter filter thread in the front there. You'll notice it also has the, uh, the same one third of a stop delineations on the manual aperture ring here. Uh, they also gave it the, the clickless selector. So what you can do, if you can hear this, turning the manual aperture ring, has nice clicks, but if you switch this over, then you have a smooth silent operation, which is super, super helpful for video projects uh, and scenarios where you need to be as quiet as possible. It has, of course, the programmable focus hold button, which is pretty standard on most Sony lenses, and then an autofocus manual focus selector switch. The aperture and the focus rings are rubberized and textured, which of course is pretty standard also. Uh, it just kind of feels nice. There's good grip on it, it's lightweight, but it still feels solid and ready to get the job done. So let's talk photos, right? Obviously it's beautiful to look at, but that's not why you buy a lens like this. 
So we got to Norway. It was nighttime, and we happened to have good weather. So we went out for some Astro. We really hoped for some Northern Lights. Unfortunately, we kind of struck out, but we did get some clear skies. I got a chance to look at some stars through this. The good news is it is impressively sharp. So this photo was shot on my a7 III, so unfortunately we don't have a ton of resolution to crop in on. But if you look at the 100% crop, these stars are incredibly sharp here. Um, each one is focused down to nearly a pixel. I'm going to take it a little bit beyond the 100% crop so that we can zoom in even further and really pixel peep these things. But if you look, they are sharp. It's resolving much more than the resolution of the a7 III sensor. Going up into the corner here, you'll see just a tiny bit of coma, a little bit of sagittal astigmatism, but all in all, this is still incredible optical performance. This was shot at f1.8, it's wide open, and you can see minimal vignette, definitely some, but controllable vignette, incredibly sharp and low distortion. Um, I'm amazingly impressed by this. Okay, so let's look at some daytime photos, right? It's, it'll give us a little bit more to play with. We're not just shooting high ISO, long exposures, a little bit more of a dynamic scene with more interesting lighting. These were shot on the A7R3, so uh, 42 megapixels instead of 24, so we're able to zoom in a little bit further. First off, this was shooting straight into the sun, which is something I wanted to test, because Sony bragged about the extra low dispersion glass on here as well as the nano AR coating, both of which are kind of hallmark features of G Master lenses like the 24 millimeter. This is just a G series lens, but they, they pulled out all the stops in terms of the quality of glass on it. And so I kind of wanted to test that out. Looking here, shooting straight into the sun, you'll notice no lens flare, no ghosting. That's about as clean as it gets. I'm pretty impressed by that. I am kind of a sucker for sun stars. I love a good lens flare and ghosts, but it's kind of nice to not be forced into it. The 12 to 24 f4, for example, I'm obsessed with the cool rainbow lens flares that you get when you're shooting a backlit subject, but it is mandatory, which is not always uh, a benefit. You know, it's something that's nice to be able to choose. If we zoom in on the sun here, you can see it's just kind of a nice soft drop off, good golden glow, and no artifacts anywhere else in the frame. As far as the sharpness goes, I shot this wide open, f1.8. If we zoom in, this uh, fish structure here is probably 30 feet tall. I'm shooting the entire thing in the frame. This is a massive, massive scene I'm shooting. We can zoom in so far that you can see individual bolts and wood grain textures on the posts. That is just an incredible amount of sharpness in the center of the frame from a lens like this. Uh, I'm. I couldn't be more impressed, by the way, it's resolving this scene. Looking down into the corners, of course, it's a little bit out of focus because I shot it at f1.8. You can see a little bit of pixel stretching from this lens being rectilinear, but it's all in all um, really sharp still. Uh, there's no like noticeable drop off in quality towards the edges other than you know the standard stuff you might expect. One of the things that impressed me most about this lens is the contrast and the color rendering just straight out of camera. I've never seen a lens before that has such beautiful details and textures and colors on a raw file. Usually you look at the raw files and you're like, man, that, that kind of sucks. I got work to do, but this looks awesome. So check out this photo, uh, sunrise in a beautiful little Norwegian town, but check out the unedited photo. The raw by itself is almost print worthy. It's still rich. It has deep saturated colors, nice shadows, but the highlights aren't blown out. I did pretty minimal editing to get this to a place where I was happy with it. And I have to be honest, that's a pretty appealing thing to find in a lens. It's going to save me a ton of, of effort in my workflow. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the aperture variations on this because as we know shooting at f1.8 is pretty much reserved exclusively for astrophotography, low light scenarios, and then maybe some macro stuff where you want an extremely thin depth of field. Most of the time for daylight shooting scenarios you're going to stop down f2.8, f4, etc. So I took some photos standing here, varied aperture so we can take a look. This first shot here is at f1.8. If we zoom in all the way, you can see that in the center of the frame, it's sharp, uh, but there's a slight amount of 
uh, softness there, a little tiny bit of maybe chromatic aberration. You can see that the colors from the highlights are gently bleeding into the shadows. It's super minor. I don't think it's anything that anybody will complain about. But if we look at the next photo, stop down to f2.8 already, the sharpness is noticeably improved. There's no more of that highlight bleeding into the shadows. Moving to f4, we're about as crisp as I think we're going to get. Uh, moving to the corners, you can see that everything is still very sharp all around. Uh, the depth of field, of course, is a little bit better. But the fact that you can see textures in these waves at f4 in the corner of a 20 millimeter lens is pretty incredible. Stopping down to f5.6, we are left with uh, an incredibly sharp photo. No noticeable defects there to my eye. Couldn't be happier. This is great news, right? The lens is sharp at f5.6, f4, f2.8, corner to corner more or less, uh, but it's also good at f1.8, even in daylight scenarios. That's a win. Put the check mark in the, the get it box, the you want to buy it box. This is a spicy lens. What am I saying? Why am I like this? I kind of wanted to run this through the gauntlet a little bit, not just shoot, you know, beautiful nightscapes and soft morning light. I wanted to shoot something a little bit later in the day when you're getting that dramatic, those deep shadows from the harsh sunlight. This is, uh, I mean, you know, we're in the Arctic Circle, so the sun doesn't get that high. It's kind of golden hour all day. So this is about as, as blue hour as we could get it, so to speak. But if you look at these mountains, um, the contrast is still rendered beautifully. They're super sharp. They still look dramatic. There was nothing there that was difficult for me to deal with. Some lenses really struggle. The contrast is almost too extreme. The shadows are black, the highlights are white. This found a really nice centerpiece. And uh, I mean, obviously the lens is not fully to blame. I had it attached to a professional level camera. There's a lot going on there, but all in all, the lens made it really, really nice. I, I was thrilled with the performance, even in harsh scenarios like this. Okay, so final thoughts. Obviously this lens really impressed me, but you know, $800, $900 MSRP, is it enough to justify that expense? There's a 24 millimeter F1.4. Is the extra four millimeters worth that cost? If you own the 16 to 35 F2.8 G Master, that can shoot at 20 millimeters. Is the difference from 2.8 to 1.8 worth the extra cost to justify a full spot in your backpack. I don't know about you, but I have too many lenses. I go into the backcountry a lot, so I have to carry everything with me. Adding a lens to my arsenal is a pretty big decision. However, I think in every scenario, the answer for me is a resounding yes. This lens could not have impressed me more. It is sharp, it's beautiful, it weighs almost nothing. I cannot wait to get one. The second it's available, I'm going to ask for one. And I'm already expecting this to probably be my number one most used lens for the rest of 2020. Milky Way season is right around the corner. This is going to get slapped onto my a7 III and it's probably going to live there until like Thanksgiving or later. Maybe I'll never take it off. Maybe I'm going to buy a dedicated camera for my 20 millimeter and we're going to go camping together like two best friends. It just kept getting weirder. Okay, that got weird quick, sorry. But yes, the takeaway is this is awesome. I'm gonna get one. I can't recommend it enough. This really, really blew me away. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Nate in the Wild. If you liked what you see, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button, tell your friends. I'll see you next time.